Welcome back to the Red Dice Diaries RPG podcast. I'm your host, John, and today I'm going to be talking a little bit about the use of cards in RPGs. But first of all, cue the music. Okay, so if you've seen Tuesday's episode or the video version on YouTube, then you'll know that I recently purchased a lovely set of playing cards to test out the point slash hex crawl creation procedure in the Realm Fables Sandbox Creator Book by Shield Dice Studios. In doing this, I also rediscovered an article in the OSR zine Knock issue 3 about creating a wilderness using dice and cards and i'm going to be doing an episode on that in the next day or two however prior to this i've always been more than a little bit skeptical of games that used cards although myself and hannah both have a copy of everway and i once owned dragonlance fifth age which used its own special card deck sadly i don't have it any longer However, I don't recall being massively impressed by any RPGs that used cards. Even Deadlands, which I quite like, I was nonplussed about the use of cards in the original version when I played it. So as I was thinking about this, I thought I'd record an episode where I talk about some of the reasons why I'm a little bit sceptical about using cards in RPGs. Normally, I'd probably call this an RPG bugbears video. However, I don't think it really is because I'm also going to talk about some things where, that I think cards are good for and even the arguably negative points will hopefully have some sort of positive spin on them. Okay, so let's get started. Why aren't I keen on cards in RPGs? Well, first reason is that it's easy to lose cards out of a deck. And if you lose a few cards from a deck, then it's pretty much useless and you have to buy a whole new one. Whereas it's probably cheaper to just buy one dice if you lose one. And let's face it, most role players have loads of dice and probably not as many decks of cards lying around. Unless you love yourself some poker or something similar as well. The second reason is that games that use proprietary or unique card decks just seem designed as a bit of a money spinner in my opinion. After all... You probably can't just use standard playing cards in such a game. More than likely, you've got to pay through the nose for a special deck of cards to go with that specific game. If that game then goes out of print, suddenly these cards can become very difficult to get hold of and the prices can get a little bit silly. However, I don't think this is just a problem with customised card decks, though. Games that use special or proprietary dice are equally as guilty of jacking up the prices and then becoming difficult to get. I certainly remember this being the case with the dice for FFG Star Wars when I was playing that, and I was only mollified by the fact you could get a dice roller up for it and avoid paying the silly high costs for special dice. And luckily you can get various dice rolling apps, and you can get some card drawing apps online. You know, if you're running your games online, you don't want to pot out for dice and cards, which is always a handy thing. It's nice to have options if you want to use them. Three, I think that using cards just to determine a random number wastes the potential of cards. In addition to a number, playing cards have their suit, the colour of the suit. We also have face cards and perhaps even jokers if you leave them in the pack. If you just want a random number, then I don't see that the inconvenience of cards has anything to recommend them over dice. However, if you're going to use not just the number, but the suit and other facets of the card to somehow enrich your game, add additional dimensions to your random tables or whatever, as the sandbox creator does, then you're making a much better use of the cards, in my opinion. And that's just playing cards. If you're using something like tarot, where a degree of interpretation can be brought into the result of a draw, then you open yourself up to even more potential depths of results. Although, I do think this interpretation can slow a game down if the GM is not skilled at this sort of thing and familiar with the cards that they are using, in the case of Tarot. For myself, I much prefer using them as a prep tool or for random charts where I'm going to be doing the card draws before the session so it doesn't interfere with the flow of the game. So, there's a few reasons why I've been a little bit anti-card in my RPGs up to now now here's a few things i think that cards do well number one having a hand of cards has a certain mystique to it that may suit certain games the image of someone playing cards with a devil for instance can work great for a western or a cult game and although i wasn't sold personally on the use of cards in deadlands it's hard to deny that card games 
do go hand in hand with the idea of a western setting. Two, using a hand of cards can bring an element of strategy to a game. If you're playing a game where you have a diminishing hand of cards, but you play to make your tests, then it does add an additional element of strategy where you have to consider how important it is that you pass this test. Do you use a great card on it, knowing that you might not draw such a good replacement? Or do you try and scrape by with an average or a poor card and save your great one for later? Now, how much you like or dislike this idea is obviously down to personal preference, and it does go hand in hand with certain meta mechanics. Some groups are fine with this, others aren't so keen. A downside of this strategic element is that it can slow down the game if you have players who are a little more indecisive or take ages analysing their options. Again, how much you care about this is down to your own individual group and game. Three, although they can be pricey and a bit of a pain to replace, tarot or cards with imagery on them can serve as a great boost to the imagination or a prompt if you're coming up empty, inspirationally speaking. Although again, this relies on the GM and potentially the players being comfortable with this style of gaming and able to interpret, draw inspiration from the imagery whilst maintaining the flow of the game. And finally, another thing that cards are great for, as we saw in the episode about the sandbox creator, is that you can use them to form a physical grid on the table by laying them out in rows and columns, almost like the cells of a spreadsheet. And that can be great as a handy visual representation if you're using them to create a map or something along those lines, as we talked about in the Sandbox Creator episode. So there we are. There's a few reasons why I've been a little bit sceptical about using cards in RPGs up to now. And some things I think they do well. I think personally for myself, I find them a little bit challenging to use during an actual session. Because for me, it sort of distracts me from the, the flow of the game. So I much prefer to keep them as prep tools that I use before a game but who knows maybe that will change in future as I become more accustomed to them or if I find a really cool game that I like that uses playing cards or something similar after all practice makes perfect as they say and I think one of the great things about RPGs is that you never really stop learning when you're jamming and or playing so I'd love to hear what you think about cards in RPGs do you love them? Do you hate them? What games have you played that use cards? And how did those systems work? If you want to call in and tell us about it, as I said, we'd love to hear your thoughts on this. You can get in touch a number of different ways. You can drop us a voicemail using either SpeakPipe or Anchor. There'll be a link in the description of this show. Or you can send us an email to rddrpgpodcast at gmail.com. Until we see you again, take care, stay safe, and whatever you're playing, have fun. Mm -hmm.